myocarditis, increasing in young men approximately 30 and under that receive multiple doses of the jab. I am going to attach the article that I will be reading from. It's actually multiple articles because there are studies coming out about myocarditis increasing specifically in young men. So I feel the need that this information should be shared and spread amongst people that don't have these articles readily available or don't know where to look for them. What is myocarditis? It is the inflammation of the heart muscle. The inflammation can reduce your heart's ability to pump and cause rapid or abnormal heart rhythms. Signs and symptoms include chest pain, fatigue, shortness of breath, and rapid or irregular heartbeats. Severe myocarditis weakens your heart so that the rest of your body doesn't get enough blood. Clots can form in your heart leading to stroke or heart attack. And gentlemen, understand that your heart is connected to your reproductive system. So the moment that your heart starts to give you issues, understand that not only your kidneys are going to start malfunctioning, but your penis will start to malfunction because impotence is often an early sign of endothelial dysfunction throughout the cardiovascular system. I have a whole video on that, won't go into it here. But an erection depends on the free flow of blood to and from the penis. Now let's go to the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices on September 23rd. In quote, this pandemic is dynamic and evolving with new data about jab safety and effectiveness becoming available every day. Acting FDA Commissioner Janet Woodcock said in a statement announcing the authorization, as we learn more about safety and effectiveness of COVID-19 jabs, including the use of a booster dose, we will continue to evaluate the rapidly changing science and keep the public informed. Pfizer and Biotech had requested a full license for their booster shot, which they hope would be made available to anyone who had pre previously received their jab. They propose a third shot be given at least six months after the second jab in series. But in a rigorous meeting last Friday, the expert panel that advises the FDA on the jab voted against recommending the broad use with members arguing that there isn't enough evidence to support the contention that everyone 16 and older who received the Pfizer jab needs to be boosted six months after their second shot. The panel's initial reaction was that it did not want to approve booster for everyone over the age of 16 because it wasn't clear young patients need it and because younger men in particular, a booster's risk might outweigh its benefits. The main risk the main reason was the risk of a condition called myocarditis, an inflammation of the heart which seems to occur with the Pfizer and Moderna jabs. Overall, it seems very rare, occurring only once in tens of thousands of jabs. But the FDA has estimated that for younger men, it may occur as frequently as one in 5,000 jabs. There are no data to show how that risk might change with a third dose. Now, one in 5,000 might seem like good like it might seem like a good average but it seems good until it is you and understand that the frequency of it occurring is increasing the studies are changing and the advisor said that the rapidly changing science keywords rapidly changing science how are we going to keep up with this thing and keep up with this information this is for your information for you to think about things and how you want to move forward okay let's move on to another study so we could understand that a lot of things get approved that really should not be approved fda tells drug makers to redo studies run by two contract research firms due to data integrity issues in a rare move the fda has notified an untold number of drug makers that some of their clinical trials must be repeated due to a serious that a problem at a pair of companies in India that run studies for the pharmaceutical industry. The action stemmed from inspections at two clinical research organizations that were conducted in 2019. It is about to be 2022. This article just came out. After running its own analysis, the agency found significant instances of misconduct and violations of federal regulations which resulted in the submission of invalid study data to the FDA, according to a September 16th statement posted by the FDA. 2019, whatever drug that this is, or drugs that it are incorporated with this study, it took over two years for them to realize that the studies were done inefficiently. 
An agency spokesperson wrote us that the FDA is aware of slightly more than 100 drug applications that were affected by the data integrity issues. Now, this is actually early for them to catch. But what's interesting is, meanwhile, the FDA is changing the therapeutic equivalence rating for any approved brand name or generic drug that relied on data from the companies. As a result, the drug can, not cannot, can be prescribed but not automatically substituted at pharmacies. So that they, they know there's an issue. They know there's an issue. They know that tests have to be redone. They know that people are already taking all of these drugs and they are not pulling these drugs off of the market. I understand that there's a lot of people that take to heart that FDA approval really actually means something, but let me explain something to you. The FDA has approved some sketchy ass shit and I'm going to run through a couple of, of these sketchy items that were approved here in America and banned in other countries. BVO, brominated vegetable oil, added to some drinks such as a Mountain Dew to enhance the citrus flavor. BVO has also been used by other companies as a flame retardant in plastics. This chemical box receptors in our bodies which can lead to endocrine reproductive problems and more. This chemical has been banned in other countries but is approved by the FDA. All right, RBGH stands for recombinant bovine growth hormone. It is given to cows to increase their milk production. According to the American Cancer Society, this hormone has the potential to increase the risk of cancer in humans. This hormone also causes other infections in cows. The FDA approved RBGH in 1993, even though it is banned in the European Union, Canada, and other countries. One of my favorite, castorium. This is a natural flavor. Natural flavor. This thick odorous secretion obtained from the anal glands of beavers is used to give a vanilla flavor to some dairy products and desserts. This thick odorous secretion obtained from the anal glands of beavers is used to give a vanilla flavor to some dairy products and desserts. Now they did find a synthetic version of the vanilla flavoring that they get from a uh, conifer it's a cone bearing seed plant but we are still using beaver butt juice as vanilla flavoring is just not used as much as it was previously and also we have chlorine it's still in our drinking water in its elemental form, chlorine is a highly reactive gas, but it does not occur in nature in this elemental form. In nature, it's always found with other compounds. I said in two, two videos ago that most elements are not found alone. They are found in unison with another element. So chlorine specifically is typically found with chloride, sodium chloride, aka salt. Chlorine gas was used as a weapon in World War I. I'm going to go over a couple of dangerous drugs that were recalled by the FDA, but I don't really want you to focus on the name of the drug. I want you to focus on the time frame that the drug was on the market before it was recalled. The first one is called Valdicoxib, also known as Bextra. Time on the market, 2001 to 2005. Another one, I'm going to attach it because I'm not going to read what each and everything what each and every one of these drugs is recalled for, but most of them are death, heart attacks, strokes, increased risk for skin reaction, things of that nature. Another one is Pemeline, time on the market, 1975 to 2010. It was used to treat ADD and ADHD. Uh, the next one, Bromfenac, it was on the market for one year. Another one, Ergamisol, also known as Levamisol, on the market from 1989 to 2000. Now, we also have Refocovix. It is also known as Viox. Time on the market, 1999 to 2004. Acetane is always on the market from 1982 to 2009. And I'll just do one more. We have Raptiva Ephalizumab. It was on the market from 2003 to 2009. That was used to treat psoriasis but it was causing way too much psychological issues and lethal inflammation in the brain and central nervous system. Who remembers Wolf of Wall Street? Amazing movie. 
And if you watch Wolf of Wall Street, you're going to be familiar with the term Quaaludes. Quaaludes was once an approved drug between the years of 1962 and 1985. The way the actors demonstrated the effects of quaaludes on the body is exactly why it should not have been approved. Many who took it were helpless insomniacs, suffering from anxiety, and they just needed a little bit of sleep. But it caused people to become manic, seizing convulsions, depression, sometimes dying. Now... Pharmaceuticals are incapable of acting only on a specific target. Essentially, the whole belief system is that we need to poison the bloodstream to protect us from disease. I'll say that again. We need to poison the bloodstream to protect us from disease because pharmaceuticals have moved so far away from using a natural product to initiate the start of the drug that it is 1000% poison. In closing, the heart, which was the initial reason for making this video, is a very powerful muscular organ and is associated with the spirit. It's busy providing blood to every single cell in your body and continuously bringing blood back to itself and the lungs to be oxygenated. It is vitally connected to our sense of joy, our willingness to forgive, our sense of love for ourselves and others, and a healthy heart is beneficial to the joy that we receive in our life every unnatural element every substance that's incapable of being metabolized weakens the heart weakens the natural function of the overall body and it impairs the process of nutrition and reduces the efficiency of the healing process it's card time see what we get today grasshoppers a new romantic cycle begins now what this means and we are in the libra libra is a sign of love and harmony negotiation and relationship and it's harmonious kind of always aiming for balance so when we have the new moon in libra there's a restart possibly for anything and everything connected to partnerships negotiations appearances and justices Remember that the Libra is depicted by a set of scales. This energy wants to bring things back to equilibrium. We have to balance the scale. So when you see a sign like this, a new romantic cycle begins. It doesn't necessarily have to be about love. It's about harmony, especially right now in the Libra season. The energy wants to bring things back to balance. That is so important, especially regarding the video that we just did together, family. But you can use it to attract more love in your life. But either way, we gotta balance the scales. We have to bring in that energy of love and that energy of always aiming for balance.